Hi, everybody. It's Cindy with Coffee with Clinicians. I'm here with Dr. Animash Agarwal in San Antonio, Texas. Welcome, Dr. Agarwal. Thank you. Good morning. How are you? I'm great. Um, I'm, I'm up here in Austin, so not too far from you. Um, why don't you tell the audience what um, a little bit about your background and your current practice and teaching? Sure. Um, I'm an orthopedic trauma surgeon here in San Antonio, Texas. I've been here now for well, quite a long time. I guess 23 years as a faculty member. I did my training here, uh, both for medical school and residency. I uh, did a fellowship in Columbus, Ohio in orthopedic trauma and then came back to be faculty here. So I've been here doing trauma and most, most of what I do is acute trauma. I do have a post-traumatic reconstruction practice to non-unions, malunions, and things like that. But uh, uh, that's pretty much my my life, I guess, so. <laughs> and you see kind of the worst of the worst when it comes to those trauma injuries. Um, tell me about some of the challenges that you face in trying to heal some of those wounds that you come across. Sure, you know, a lot of these fractures tend to be open. They can have uh, wounds that are problematic. And, you know, we do rely heavily on our plastics colleagues to help with a lot of those wounds. Um, but even getting the majority of the wound healed, you always have these small little areas that just sometimes don't want to heal. And they're, you know, they're acute on chronic, if you will. They're not like the chronic decubiti or kind of the chronic wounds that some of the wound care people see, but ours are more surgically related or traumatic related traumatic related. So sometimes we have, you know, little new nu nuisances in terms of trying to get these small little wounds to heal. And it's always difficult to try to figure out what the best option is for that. We use various biologics and, you know, other types of uh, ancillary products to try to help get these wounds to heal. So. And you were pretty much an early adopter of um, CDO therapy, continuous diffusion of oxygen. Um, tell me what your expectations were um, when using when you first started that, and what were some of the revelations that you did not anticipate? Sure, you know, as you know, we had actually done some work way, way, way back when on, you know, what I would call passive oxygen therapy, which were, you know, a uh, company had come out with some oxygen dressings, and they had found a way to impregnate oxygen into those dressings, and when we had some problematic wounds, and we're talking maybe eight, 10 years ago, I think, mm -hmm. um, we, we tried those. The, they were want, willing to let us try them for free. And we were actually amazed at, at some of the benefits we had from that. And then, so then coming out with y'all's product, which is more of an active um, oxygen creator, if you will, uh, um, and combining it with a dressing um, you know, we were fortunate that y'all allowed us to try that for, for some of our problematic wounds. And really it was because of my experience previously with oxygen, um, that we thought it would, would help. And so, you know, to be honest with you, and I, I think we talked about it, frankly, it's like, it was kind of the last resort. It's like, okay, we've tried everything else. Let's see, <laughs> you know, let's see what this does. And, you know, people talk about using hyperbaric oxygen and things like that. And so in a way I kind of. I don't want to call it that because it's obviously local, but I look at it as a portable hyper hyperbaric oxygen machine for my for my uh, you know problematic wounds. Um, so really, I mean, I, I didn't really know what to expect. I mean, based on my previous history of using the other type of oxygen, um, I was hoping to get similar results, um, and I think we did. Um, and then you know we had some other other beneficial effects as well. So. So what were those beneficial effects that you saw? Well, you know, I think one of the biggest things that we really did not expect, you know, a lot of these people have kind of chronic pain type of issues with these wounds or, or not really horrible, horrible pain, but just annoying enough to the patient that they know it's there. Mm -hmm. and, and after we had tried the CDO device, it was clear that a lot of the patients almost I'd say nine out of 10, maybe even 10 out of 10. The one thing they did say was that the pain had pretty much gone away or resolved or, you know, or had gone, gone down to a very, very minimal um, level, which, which we really didn't expect at all, you know? And um, 
So the pain issue was one. Um, I think the, you know, a lot of these t tissues around here were kind of, I don't want to say indurated, but they were very woody, kind of just tough and tight. And we did see kind of a subtle softening of the soft tissues around there as well. So that kind of uh, was interesting to see that as well. And I think that helped kind of allow those wounds to heal up a little bit better too. And why do you think, um, and it's purely hypothesis, of course, because we don't really know what, why patients experience this pain relief, but why do you, um, what, what would be your hypothesis as to why they experience that? Uh, you know, that's, I think that's the question of the day. I mean, we're, we've been trying to figure out exactly what it is. I don't know if it's the oxygen helps kind of decrease the inflammatory response that's occurring right there, which, you know, we know that inflammation results in pain, right? That's why we right. have anti-inflammatories for pain relief and things like that. And so, um, so that for some reason, I think the oxygen helps decrease all those, maybe those toxic radicals or whatever uh, people talk about, you know, in inflammatory responses um, and help decrease that um, to alleviate that discomfort. But I mean, I, I think that's, that's one area that needs to be looked at to see see what it is exactly that that does is it just simply increasing blood flow in that area because of the you know does the oxygen response uh create something like that i don't know you know we know uh i think people have looked at various responses on other devices that are supposed to help improve the the blood flow around there um mm -hmm. and you know does the oxygen just providing that oxygen to that local area help increase the blood flow the underlying blood flow um, besides just providing oxygen to it. You know, there's got to be some, some response on a vascular level that allows that tissue to heal up. So what that is, is that, you know, I think that needs further investigation to, to look at. So. And, and you do work um, in research and you work, um, you know, with the university there. What, what other, um, areas do you see as opportunities for research in CDO therapy? Yeah, I mean, I think looking at the exact effects of CDO on the local, <laughs> you know, local vasculature in terms of, you know, there's lots of technology we have that can look at blood flow. You know, there's the spy machine that we've, we've used for, <laughs> for helping to look at what, you know, what skin wounds are viable in terms of seeing, um, what the blood flow is in those areas. So it'd be interesting to see exactly what the CDO does, you know, before and after application to kind of figure that out. Um, and I think trying to figure out the pain issue as well, you know, whether the, I, it's always hard to do subjective tests on patients in terms of what their pain level is and then trying to look at narcotic use and anti-inflammatory use. Um, but it'd be interesting to see if there's a way to look at either certain types of um, markers in the blood or something like that, that decrease with oxygen therapy. I mean, I think there's a whole, we go on and on for about hours about talking about <laughs> different kinds of uh, ways to do it. But I think there's, a, there's an opportunity, you know, for a lot of that to, to, to be looked at and see exactly what the, the mechanism is, you know, does it just increase the blood flow of that area? How widespread does it work? Um, and doing that on, you know, even intact skin, you know, just putting oxygen on there and seeing, you know, if it's, if it does help with pain relief, can you put it over arthritic joints to see if that helps relieve some of their pain? I mean, there, there's a lot of things. Yeah, I should that try that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I mean, you never know. Every, everybody's, everybody's said pain is, is an improvement and you know, some of the wounds that we were putting it on were very small wounds. We're not talking huge holes. We're talking like, you know, two, three millimeter round areas that have just been problematic to get healed. And even on those patients, they had significant pain relief. So, you know, 90% of the area covered was probably intact skin. Yeah, I, I do recall one of your patients um, that was a stump patient. And I remember her reporting significant relief um, of pain and we healed her pretty quickly. Yeah. I mean, she, you know, she had a little woundy hissance. She's a bad diabetic. Yeah. Uh, had a little woundy hissance after the below knee amputation, which was done for, um, you know, pretty much a bad, uh, bad diabetic infection. 
um, and just always had a little area in the front that was difficult to get healed up. And, you know, sometimes you just taking them back to surgery to revise it just doesn't do it because the, the, there's still some underlying biology that's just not helping to heal. And so just giving it that little extra help with the oxygen seemed to work. And, you know, we've had several patients of those where they heal 90% of the wounds and then maybe 10% of the wound just doesn't want to do it. And then for whatever reason, um, you apply some other adjunct therapies such as the CDO and it really helped, you know, we had that one guy who had a couple of draining sinuses for quite a bit and we tried different things and they would fluctuate and then it looked like they're improving and they'd stop, um, you know, and he, interestingly enough, but we, we kind of briefly talked about him, you know, he had three, you know, he had external fixators in place. Some of those holes were probably related to uh, pin sites. Hardware. Um, and then we couldn't get them. They just wouldn't granulate in a lot. The tissue around there was kind of beat up over the years from all those multiple surgeries. You know, right. Probably. And uh, we got, I think, two out of the three healed with the CDO. Yeah. That one, that one was just stubborn. And then <laughs> I talked to our plastic surgeon. He said, you know what? I would try hyperbarics. And so he actually went to hyperbarics and then completed it. So good oxygen's clearly a good answer working, you know yeah. and so um and that worked for him and so you know maybe the cdo is great for certain wounds that are certain depths and then maybe something deeper needs something more but i think maybe we underappreciate the effects of oxygen you know i think it's not anything i mean it's not what's the it, it's not high tech it's oxygen, right? <laughs> yeah. It's around us. But we kind of forget about it as something that's essential for, for wound healing, right? That's how, right. how wounds get their uh, oxygen is from blood supply. So if you have poor blood supply, we, we, we divorce the idea of blood supply and oxygen, I think, sometimes in our head, or we don't really equate the two together. But that's what it is. It's like, oh, we say it doesn't have enough blood supply. Well, in, this, in essence, we're saying it doesn't have enough oxygen. Also. Right. So, so is that what we're missing in a lot of these wounds, you know? So I think that's another aspect that needs to be. Yeah. Out. I think, I think you've left us with a lot more questions, but I truly <laughs> appreciate your time this morning, having coffee with me in your beautiful Tuscan landscape <laughs> back there <laughs> and my wound care center whiteboard. <laughs> I finally discovered these windows. It's like, I don't like my background. I got to figure out how to do this. I pulled pictures. I, was, I, I wish I was Tuscany. That was Napa a long time ago. But it, oh, it, well, that's it's still good. I'll pick either one. Yes. That's right. That's right. So, this has been yet another episode of Coffee with Clinicians. Cheers, Dr. Agarwal. Cheers. And, Thank uh, you, Cindy. We'll, we'll talk soon. All righty. Thank Thanks you. so much. Bye bye. Bye bye.